We ended the previous video with the graph in the upper right. The horizontal axis is fishing effort, and the vertical axis is dollars. And the black line is total revenue, the red line is total cost. So now the question is, what is the equilibrium? Where is the difference between total revenue and total cost, which is, which is profit? Where is profit going to be? And the first case I want to consider, that's the case in this video, we'll take the next case in the next video, is called open access. That's the title here of, of, this, uh, of this video is open access. What open access means is that there are no property rights. Think about fishing for fish in the ocean, in international waters, where there's no regulation. Now in the real world, sometimes there actually is fishing regulation even in international waters, but those are fairly new developments. So open access means that nobody owns the fish. There are no fishing restrictions. It's literally a free-for-all. In open access, I claim that the equilibrium is going to be, so the open access equilibrium, is going to be where profit equals zero. Now remember from the very beginning of the class, when we talk about profit here, we mean economic profit, not accounting profit. So zero economic profit is a pretty good place to be. It just means that you're covering all your costs, including your opportunity cost. So you're making as much money being a fisherman as you could in any other industry. If accounting profit were zero, you'd be in trouble. But economic profit, as we know, is, is different. And economic profit equals zero is a perfectly fine situation to be. Next, I need to argue that not only is it a perfectly fine situation to be, but it's the equilibrium. Suppose it weren't the equilibrium. If it weren't the equilibrium, then the equilibrium would either be characterized by positive profit or it would be characterized by negative profit. But I claim that if you had positive profit, then you'd get entry. In other words, people would see people who weren't fishermen would see, wow, this you can earn positive profit if you're a fisherman. Whereas all of us people who aren't fishermen, we're just covering our opportunity costs and making zero profit. And since this is an open access situation, Anybody can become a fisherman and catch fish who wants to. There's no restriction. It's a free-for-all, as I said. So in the presence of strictly positive economic profit, non-fishermen are going to quit their jobs and become fishermen, and they're going to enter the fishing industry and start getting some of this strictly positive profit. So that's not going to be an equilibrium. And what will happen just intuitively is that as these firms start to enter, if you think about the market for fish, you have a supply curve and a demand curve. The supply curve will shift out and that'll decrease the price, therefore putting a pressure on profit. So that's not going to be an equilibrium. Okay, how about if profit is less than zero? If profit is strictly less than zero, I claim that there's going to be exit of firms. Because you can make zero profit being anywhere else in the economy. That's the long run equilibrium. And there's no reason to stick with being a fisherman if uh, fishing earns you a negative profit. So that's an argument for why positive profit is not a long-run equilibrium, and negative profit is not a long-run equilibrium. And if neither positive profit nor negative profit is a long-run equilibrium, then the long-run equilibrium is the one that I claimed here. The open access equilibrium will have zero profit. Well, then it becomes pretty easy to go back to, uh, to, the, to, to the graph here and figure out what the equilibrium condition is and how it uh, it changes. 
So I'm going to redraw the graph now a little bit uh, bigger. So fishing effort. Dollars. Total revenue. Total cost. We want zero profit. It's easy to see where profit's equal to zero. Profit's equal to zero where total revenue is equal to total cost, which is right here. And so this point, I'm going to label it OA, is the open access equilibrium point because it has zero profit, because total revenue is equal to total cost. I want to point out a couple of things about this. First, I want to compare it to maximum sustainable yield. Maximum sustainable yield, you might remember, is here. It's this point. It's the largest that sustainable yield could achieve. And the upper left-hand graph maximum sustainable yield would be about here at this level of fishing effort. In the graph on the right that we're working on, it's going to be here at the maximum of total revenue. So I'll label this MSY for maximum sustainable yield. Now this is actually the maximum sustainable yield level of effort. It's not the maximum sustainable yield itself. The maximum sustainable yield itself is the number of fish. And we don't have fish on this axis. The only, the only place here, uh, well, well we, ha we, have, we have fish here on, on, on this axis. This is the steady state yield. And we have fish here, uh, births minus deaths per year. So in those diagrams, we have fish. But in the diagram we have um, with total revenue and total cost, we don't have fish. So I can't label maximum sustainable yield itself. But this is the maximum sustainable yield level of effort. Um, the other thing to say about open access equilibrium is this is sort of not a great place to be. Call this point A. Let's just compare that to another point I'll call B, which is at the same height, but to the left. So the industry is not at B. But suppose it were. Suppose you, suppose you could. <laughs> convince the, the fishermen to be at B's level of effort. Let's see where uh, revenue and cost is going to be. Total revenue is going to be here. Total cost is going to be here. The gap between total revenue and total cost is profit. You've got a really nice profit here. It's, it's of course greater than zero. Now, anybody looking at this diagram and trying to choose between A and B, any uh, fisherman is going to say, well, B is a much better place than A because you're making strictly positive profit at B and you're not making any profit at all at A. The problem is that if the... Oh, let me say one more th good thing about B. Uh, how about if you're an environmentalist? Well, if you're, envir if you're an environmentalist, at, at the open access equilibrium A, that's characterized by a lot of fishing effort. At the alternative point B, fishing effort is a lot lower. And what that means is a lower fishing effort means there's going to be a higher stock size, a higher population size, more fish in the ocean because there's less fishing effort. So not only was, would the fishing industry prefer point B to point A, but environmentalists would also prefer point B to point A. 
so why did I say A is the equilibrium when everybody would prefer B? Well, um, suppose the industry tried to enforce B's level of effort, which is down here. So the firms get together and they say, guys, we're all going to cut down on the amount of fishing that we do all the way so that in the aggregate we get all the way down to B. And well, they would be making this, this nice amount of profit. But the problem is, even if they, uh, so one problem is, is entry. But suppose they were able to, this doesn't go really along with open access, but suppose they were able to keep new firms from entering. So the old firms um, didn't, don't have any legal barriers to fishing, but suppose they could keep new entrants out. Still, if everybody got together and said that they were going to all go to B, there's an incentive to cheat. Because suppose when everybody else is, B, is at B, you decide to increase your level of effort over to here. Well, then you can grab this much profit from here to here. The difference between total revenue and total cost. And that means that this cartel is going to be under pressure. Every single fishing firm has an incentive to cheat. And it's hard to keep cartels together for a long time. Eventually, you are going to get cheating. That's going to be increasing this fishing effort. Where does the cheating end? Well, as you probably know by now, the cheating ends at the open access level of effort, where there's no more incentive to cheat anymore because all the profits have disappeared. So B is a better point than A, but A is the point that you're actually going to observe. And there might be some times when you observe a point like B, but it's not going to last long because the incentives that firms have to cheat. We call this, um, this situation the tragedy of the commons. This is the title of a famous article that was written in the 1960s. And a better term would be the tragedy of open access. The author was a biologist, not an economist, so he used the term commons instead. But the tragedy of the commons, or the tragedy of open access, is that each individual has an incentive to overexploit the resource. And so in the aggregate, the resource gets overexploited. Now, you might want to ask about extinction. And it's, it is interesting to talk about extinction in the context of open access, but we can't do it in this model. Because, remember back over here, we talked about steady state yield and sustainable yield. So because we didn't have the mathematics to talk about dy dynamic uh, modeling, we had to assume that you were in a sustainable state. And if you're in a sustainable state, you can't talk about extinction. So it's a limitation of our model that we can't talk about extinction. So this concludes our theoretical discussion of open access. We'll talk about open access in, in a real world data-driven context um, in a little while. But the next video is going to be about an alternative industry structure, which instead of hope having open access, has, has rules and private property ownership that limit the amount of fishing that can be done.